I'd like to welcome everybody again this uh, wonderful Thursday afternoon and once again tayo po ay magkakasama for another uh, moment of uh, going into the Word of God and I hope that everything is well with you and I pray that you will always be in shape and in health because our God is always the God that we are uh, to find protection in and find safety in. Praise God. Right now, I'd like to go straight to uh, my topic. And uh, last time, I started to talk to you about the characters that will ensure us of the best of life. And I mentioned that this will take us several meetings for us to go over this. And if we want to succeed, what is really important is our character, not our know-how. Kahit magaling ka, you have a lot of understanding about how things are to be worked out, but if your character fails you, you will not find success. Character is very important. So last time na uh, discuss natin is uh, how we are to be a person who, who is always focused in life. Dapat nakafocus tayo. We are not to uh, be jack of all trades, master of none, and we are not to be unstable in all of our ways or inconsistent, unsettled and restless. And we are not to be people who are double-minded. We are not to be two-souls individual. But uh, we also learn how to uh, um, fix our eyes clearly on uh, the things that uh, God wants us to uh, do in order for us to be successful in matters of focusing our eyes and there are three things so there were three things that we talked about firstly we are to let our eyes or our vision look directly ahead of us don't keep turning back secondly that we are to fix our gaze straight before us and i've told you that that word uh, straight rather as the element of uh, being positive you are always looking ahead of good future your gaze is at, not at the negative things, but in the positive things. And lastly, uh, we are to take heed or to put our attention to the path of our feet. Now, let's continue. And what I want to talk to you about has to do with uh, always learning to be enthusiastic in life. But before that, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We are coming before you and we are asking that uh, you will be with us as we have our, our uh, time together talking about your word, discussing your thoughts uh, that are written in uh, the scriptures. I pray God that you will be with us and use me as always under your anointing to deliver your word with power <clears throat> and ability, O oh God, and anointing. And thank you, God, in Jesus' name, I commit things to you. Amen and amen. So again, uh, let's uh, talk about our second topic. And it has to do with always uh, learning to be enthusiastic in life. We must always learn how we can be enthusiastic in everything that we do. And the first thing that we are to talk about here is that we should never lose our enthusiasm. You know, enthusiasm is like fire in your bones that makes you eager and uh, makes you passionate to accomplish something for God, to accomplish His plan and His will for you. And uh, this is something that helps us. focus. If you are a focused individual, you have to have enthusiasm. That's the next ingredient, so to speak, for you to find the best in life. For you to always uh, move on and see what uh, lies ahead before you. You know, people stop pursuing the plan of God in their lives simply because of a loss of enthusiasm. And with the loss of enthusiasm, this will cause people to actually park in life so that they do not continue with the goal or the plan and the vision that God has birthed in their souls because they park in life. And you know, you are never to park in your pursuit of the best things in life. 
you always have to have the fervor and uh, you always have to have the fire inside of you. Don't let that fire or the fervor and the interest to be gone and uh, leave you floating around in midair, so to speak. But, uh, you know, this is contrast to what God wants us to have in our lives. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, uh, 11. And here is what Paul said, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep what? Your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Never be lacking in zeal, in zealousness, but you are to keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Or another way to look at these words, keep your spiritual fervor, is to be hot in your spirit. Mainit ka parati sa yung spiritu. You are boiling hot. Your spiritual temperature is always up and never becoming cold. It's always boiling. You, you just want to do something for God. The zeal is so way up, just like the Apostle Paul, and never becoming cold in the way you uh, relate with the things of God, especially with the plan of God for you, for the best things in your life to be achieved. You need this fire. You need this hot temperature, so to speak. And so to apply this, whatever God has placed in your heart, the dream, the vision, the word, the change, the hope, and the plan, you are to pursue them hotly. Talagang mainit na mainit. You are not to be somebody who is pushed. You are not somebody who is uh, to be told what to do. But you are on the pursuit because you are burning hot. You are just like a uh, locomotive all full of uh, steam in the inside that you are willing to uh, pursue everything. So never be called about whatever God has placed in you or whatever is the best that God has planned for your life. Don't be called about it and nothing should ever stop you from hotly pursuing the will of God for your life, especially in the coming years. Even though we are in the pandemic, this should never stop us from hotly pursuing what God has laid down before us. Parati kang mainit para sa Diyos. And you are never, never uh, going backwards. You are always moving forward. So don't ever back away, but run after the best of uh, life or the best thing that God has for you with a fiery attitude and energy. So naka-focus ka and much more if that is coupled with fire, coupled with hot energy. And so you will always be moving. You will always be uh, directing your heart and your mind. Every part of you in order for you to attain whatever God has placed before you. Now, secondly, don't ever get distracted so that you lose your enthusiasm. Huwag ka mawala ng focus. Don't ever get distracted so that you lose your enthusiasm. You know, enthusiasm <clears throat> can be lost when a person gets himself or herself distracted in life. You know, the devil knows how to put a lot of distractions before us or in our path so that we get off track. But the zeal or the fervor or the hot uh, zeal of God or the hot spiritual fire inside of you, well, that will always cause you to move forward. But don't ever try to misplace it because you can misplace it while uh, you get yourself distracted. That is, we put the fire somewhere else other than what you must really go after or pursue of. So don't ever get yourself distracted. A distraction can be another job offer, which uh, kind of looks similar to what God has placed in your life. Okay? 
But this is not really what God wants for you. Here is God's will for you, but there is a distraction. And this looks like, this distraction looks like this one, okay? May similarity and it can look even better on the outside. So instead of you pursuing this, you go this way. You get distracted and you know what happens next? You lose the momentum. You lose the best that God wants to give to you. It can be with a wrong relationship. Okay? It can be with a wrong uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or even a wrong uh, marriage. You know, so David misplaced his zeal with Bathsheba. He hotly pursued her to the point of having her husband Uriah killed in the battle. And also, Abraham misplaces enthusiasm on Ishmael and created a problem for his descendants later on that reaches to our time. God said, you, got to have a, you will have a son. And so, he concluded that it could be through another woman. But God said that is wrong. So that was a distraction. It's still a son coming from his body, but that is not the plan of God. The plan of God was still through Sarah. So it is distraction. Uh, it means that there is sort of an alternative for you to fulfill the plan of God, for you to uh, accomplish the will of God. And this is a work of the flesh. This is the work of a man or the work of the devil so that you don't accomplish what God tells you to do. And thank God with Abraham, God brought him back to Isaac. It will be through your son uh, that you uh, will have through Sarah and you got to name that son Isaac. And God became very specific uh, to him. Thank God. But you know, the damage had already been done with uh, that distraction. And so sa ating buhay, huwag tayong panadala sa kung anumang alternative other than what the Lord has uh, placed before us. Stay within the will of God. Stay within the plan of God for you. And everybody said, I was uh, one time distracted when uh, I was being called by God into the ministry. I knew I was called by God, but I was distracted with so many things. I was young, but I was uh, uh, turning away from the call of God. And uh, may nagsabi sa akin, oh, maghanap kang trabaho. Anyway, you can still serve God here, and you can still give your offerings and things like that. I was carried away. But thank God, like Abraham, God brought me back to where I should. And thank God I listened to him after many warnings from the Lord though. So don't allow any distractions again to be in your path. And listen carefully and exactly to the instructions of God. Do not try to interpret the instructions of the Lord when it is so clear in your eyes. For example, if that is a clear calling into the ministry, it is a clear calling as that. Okay? Don't let uh, the devil deceive you to say, Oh, you know, you can still serve God while you are having this job. But the will of God is clearly for you to be in the ministry. And if that is starting a business, then it, it is not applying for a job. Okay? And if you are pursuing a medical degree then it is not a doctorate degree in psychology. You know what I'm trying to say. Don't let uh, yourself be distracted with all of these things. So don't ever confuse uh, yourself because God is never confused. He is never confused. He knows His plan and His will for your life. Alam niya ang plano niya para sa inyo and God is never distracted and God is never confused. So, 
Don't ever misplace your fervor or your fire and put it somewhere else. Still, you have to keep it up in its proper place so that you can clearly know the path where God wants you to go. And then accomplish His plan for your life. The best life is to hotly pursue what God has put in your heart and never letting it go. Okay? Now, where do we get our enthusiasm? The third point that I like to talk to you about. Enthusiasm is actually birthed by a dream. It is birthed by a dream. You know, if you're going to talk about one particular person in the New Testament who is uh, most enthusiastic among men, there is no other person that I can point than the Apostle Paul. We find it in regard to his preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. And we know in the book of Acts and all of his letters that Paul was unstoppable. From the time he met the Lord on the road to Damascus until the time of his martyrdom, Paul has never lost his enthusiasm, but he kept alive his spiritual fervor. Buhay parati yung fire ni Paul inside of him. Hardships, persecutions, attacks, being stoned, being beaten, being naked, being shipwrecked, exhausted, uh, being hungry, exposed to the coldness of the night and other things. All this did not stop the eagerness of Paul to preach the gospel to people. Nothing stopped his enthusiasm. He got stoned, uh, I believe, in Lystra. He got stoned to almost death, and people thought he was already dead, and they started to gather around Paul, and then boom, he came alive. And the next thing that you find was that Paul went to the town again and preached the gospel. And he uh, thoroughly was wounded, okay? He still got a lot of contusions in his body because you got stoned to death. And you know, those stones are not little stones. They're boulders. But the Lord uh, raised him, I believe, raised him from the dead. <clears throat> it may be the time that he went and see heaven, okay? But after that, he went straight back to the town and preached the gospel. <clears throat> so this is a guy that you cannot stop. In Acts uh, 22, we find him talking about his dream or his vision before King Agrippa as a captured prisoner. Let's uh, go to Acts 26, 13 to 19. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Sol, Sol, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place in a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Look at verse 19. So then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. I always love these words of Paul. I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. You know, as a young man, I heard a preacher uh, preach uh, about this, and that really struck my heart to this day, that uh, we are never to be disobedient to the vision that God has placed in our lives, but we are to be more enthusiastic. Because you see, enthusiasm 
or fervor or zeal is birthed by a dream or a vision or a word that God gives to you or puts in your spirit. Paul encountered the Lord Jesus, laid down uh, his life goal or his purpose. And Paul said, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. But pasabot, he was not uh, disobedient to the words of Christ. So that vision created the enthusiasm, the fervor to not be disobedient to accomplish the will of God. So it is always a birth by a dream. And when I say dream, uh, that's not the dream that happens when you're sleeping, but when you're awake, you know that you know that it is from God. And this should always make you a person burning like an oven every time. You are full of energy inside so that you forego or pursue the dream or the vision with everything that you have. Lahat ng nasa puso mo. You always are eager and you are always ex- excited about it. So note, if this is uh, what uh, many people lack, then they will not be able to pursue their dream. If people lack the dream, then nothing will drive them with passion. It's always the dream that will drive you in life with passion. People with such enthusiasm will always wind up where? At the top. Parati silang nandrito sa taas. They will be succeeding and more so enjoying the best of life. And I pray that every one of us will be enthusiastic. This, re- this actually has no regards for age. You can still be on fire for God if you are 60, 70, 80. Because this is spiritual and this is not physical, okay? So this is, uh, if this is what the Lord uh, is calling you to be doing, to pursue His will, to pursue what He has laid in your heart, please do it. And if God is very specific about it, then much more ang fire mo sa loob, ang, ang kalayo ni mo is uh, really overwhelming. Don't ever let the fire that is inside of you be quenched. Okay? So I hope that you have received the Word of God this afternoon again. And we will continue <clears throat> talking about these characters that will help us to uh, attain the best of life. So right now, mag pray po tayo sa Lord. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this moment that you have given us. Thank you, Lord God, that uh, we can contemplate on your word, discuss your word, hear your word, and uh, your word challenging us and encouraging us. I pray, Lord God, that every one of us will always be on fire spiritually, that we will always be hot inside of us, And we will never become cold, especially in regards to pursuing your will in our lives. May your people be blessed. May your people, Lord God, always shine forth, Lord God, experiencing the best that you want them to experience. Even in a time of a pandemic, you can still accomplish your word. Nothing limits your word. Nothing limits your power, O God, in the name of Jesus. So thank you, and I give you praise, and I give you honor, Father God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is another wonderful Thursday afternoon, and uh, tomorrow is uh, service again, and then uh, it's a weekend Sunday. Let's uh, be up to worship the Lord at 9 o'clock. So, once again, ginarimain na ko ang tanan to be faithful sa inyong uh, tithes at sa inyong offerings and never ever diminish or become cold in the way you give to God. 
let the fire be even in the way you give your tithes and offerings to God and as you support especially Project Joshua. Okay? This is our future. This is the future of uh, Praise Revival Center and a lot of things will happen to us when we already uh, are in that place. So please keep on praying. The Lord will be the one to bless us and pray that the Lord will raise up uh, that building for His glory. Praise God. Amen. And so, magpapaalam na po ako for the final uh, blessing and the prayer for our offerings. Everybody lift up your hands unto our Father. Salamat po, Lord God, for this time that you have given us again, Lord. All the glory belong to you. And may you always be faithful, God. Always be faithful unto your children to provide for them, especially as uh, they give to you with fervor, Lord, their offerings and their tithes and their sacrifices, O God, generous sacrifices for Project Joshua. We know, Lord God, that you will always bless us. We can never outgive you. There will be always a return in our lives because you are always faithful unto us. Thank you, our God, and uh, be with us this weekend and uh, guide us and watch over us and protect us, O God. Protect us especially from earthquakes and fire and COVID-19. And may Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yehovah lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His shalom, both now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. So, thank you very much. And uh, may the blessings of the Lord be upon us all. Don't forget again, tomorrow service at uh, 6.30 and Sunday at 9 o'clock. Shalom to everybody, and the Lord bless everyone.